with everyone in the world with their own view. Ever wonder if God has a view? And, and that's what the show's all about. What's God's view versus our view? Topics that affect our daily life. Empowering and inspiring. Right. To develop a heart, a kingdom mindset, you know. <laughs> because God does have a view. Your host, Dr. Trudy Simmons, The Christian View. Welcome, welcome to The Christian View. Thank you for inviting us into your home, whether you're watching on your TV or YouTube or watching or listening by podcast or radio. We are thankful to be part of your day today. You know, we never take sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ for granted. It is um, it is an honor and a privilege to be able to share God's word with you. So thank you again. And don't forget to keep writing. I, we pray over every prayer request. We um, answer every, um, every email that we get. So keep those prayer requests coming in, those questions and words of encouragement coming because we love them. Um, and again, don't forget to follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, YouTube, um, there's a lot of great things happening in the Christian View. Um, like tonight, or tomorrow night, we're having a night of worship. Um, and right. so we're going to be doing lots of those nights of worship. So we've hosted many, many women's events. And we can even come to your church and minister there. So, um, so I just want to say thank you. And before we get into the topic, which is the rich young ruler and the cost of following Christ, I want to introduce those sitting around the table. So I have the beautiful Trudy Davis. Thank you for being here. Pastor Lee Adams, thank you so much for being here. Kevin Swan, thank you. And Candace Kirkpatrick, thank you for being here. So these uh, men and women are doing amazing things for the kingdom in addition to pouring into the Christian view. So make sure you're following them as well on social media. Um, okay, so we're going to talk about the rich young ruler and the cost of following Christ. And um, I just want to read this real, real quick. It says, the parable of the rich young ruler is found in the Gospels, presents a powerful lesson on the challenges of discipleship and the cost of following Christ. A young man, wealthy, morally upright, approaches Jesus and asks, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Despite his devotion to the commandments, Jesus sees beyond the man's external righteousness and pinpoints the heart of the matter, which I think is so powerful. Mm -hmm. The rich young ruler was attached to his wealth, and he actually left God's presence, Christ's presence, saddened and walked away. Mm -hmm. You know, so there is so much information, so much powerful, rich information that we can learn from the rich young ruler and how we can follow Christ in a world today that I believe we have so many idols, we worship yes. so many things, we're mm -hmm. so consumed by yes. so many things that sometimes Jesus gets the back burner. So um, Trudy, let's just talk about that wealth, discipline, mm -hmm. discipleship. Mm -hmm. I think the most important thing is to not buy into the lie of our culture that more things equals more happiness. Mm -hmm. And, you know, everything screams for our attention to say that you are not complete or you're not enough if you don't have fill in the blank. Right. So, mm -hmm. so, you know, that's a lie and we know it to be true. And that's what the sadness in the heart of the young man was, mm -hmm. is just he had thought that that it was part of his righteousness. Right. And so, um, you know, this topic is also just about how do you be a disciple of right. your, your, how do you steward your money as a follower of God? And so a disciple is supposed to be someone who's a, a carbon copy of the master or the teacher. So in this great book that Peter Ganrich wrote called um, The Confessions of a Wall Street Whiz Kid, mm -hmm. he was on Wall Street and then he just realized the superficiality of it all. But anyway, so he now has a Christian financial uh, planning firm. And, it, and so he says that we, debt is not is not prohibited, but a, you know, just a couple of quick things, but it should be avoided. And one thing that we always want to remember from a biblical perspective is we want to pay back anything right, that right, we right. have, mm -hmm. that we owe. And then just secondly, that um, that you do want to put money aside for investing. And he, and he references the parable, the three parable, the talents, the three talents, right, the right. parable of that. And so God honors, you know, using your money wisely, investing it wisely. And also um, that we, if the more we make, Make, you know, the more we should give. And in his perspective, that's over and above your tithe, right. like being generous with yes. what you have and that you not to focus on possessions because what he says in this book is that material things will ultimately leave you empty. Right. And, Absolutely. you know, I can tell you personally, I grew up in a family of, of great 
affluence that then went to complete from a rich instead of rags to riches it was a riches to rags right, story right. because my parents you know they did not focus on the right priorities and they they did not have you know a biblical worldview or right. biblical perspective of right. money and I think that's what we have to think about you know it's okay to have money it's yes. okay to yes. be wealthy yes. mm -hmm. as long as the wealth doesn't have us and we are giving back to the kingdom there's a saying that says you make more to give more so that you can do more yeah. and the reality is that it's not about us and so sure. what we right. make you know financially as long as we're, it doesn't have a hold on us and we give it back into the kingdom then it's okay to be mm -hmm. to be wealthy you know I know there's that there's some you know religions that are like you you can't it's better to be poor the poor you are the more the closer you are to Christ but I don't think that's really the truth right well just tapping onto that Joseph of Arimathea was wealthy but he used that wealth you know he gives his for the purpose kingdom purposes and gives his tomb away right King Solomon when he asked for wisdom and he did not ask for it, Jesus God said not only will I give you wisdom but I will give you what you did not ask for. I will also give you wealth and honor mm -hmm. so that in your lifetime you will have no equal. And then it talks about in Luke 8, there were this five women that are pointed out. These women were helping to support Jesus' ministry mm -hmm. out of their means. Right, right. So it's what are we doing with it? That's right. Which is, goes back to what you were saying. Well, what we're doing with it. And, and, and it cannot become an idol. And I think, you know, it's so easy, right? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. You know, to, to, yes. to make it an idol because, you know, if you if you grew up with lack and then you're blessed with finances, that too be, you you want to hold on to yeah, it because yeah. you're afraid that yes. is going to be taken from you again. A wise man once told me, "We don't own our stuff; our stuff owns us." Correct, mm -hmm. and yeah. it's so true. Yeah. You know. And we've got to be mindful that what we what God has given us is not for us, no. but is to give back into the yeah. to the kingdom. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, it's hard sometimes. It is. It's, it's hard much. sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know what? We're um, talking today about the rich young ruler, and we'll be right back to discuss more of that in just a second. Don't go away. Welcome back to The Christian View. We're talking today about the rich young ruler and the cost of following Christ. In the first segment, we talked about discipleship and having and having wealth, just not letting it have you and giving it back to the kingdom. Um, and now I want to shift gears a little bit, Candace, and talk a little bit about the heart. You know, there are th over 30 scriptures in the Bible where God talks about our heart and that our heart needs to be... Um, protected above all things. I think it's uh, Proverbs 4.23, guard your heart with all diligence for out of it flows the issues. And so I think we need to really hone in on our heart and what's going on inside of us. Because again, it's okay to have things as long as those things don't have us. Yeah. And I think what you pointed out is it was important to Jesus because like you said, he says, for where your treasure is, mm -hmm. there your heart will be yeah. us also. Mm -hmm. And Samuel said, um, man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the mm -hmm. heart. And then that's where it wears our priority at. Like you said at the top, um, this story appears in three of the gospels where this young man approached Jesus. Right. And he came to Jesus dissatisfied and sadly he left. It says he went away sad right, right. because his heart was attached, as you said, to this possession and he was unwilling to surrender mm -hmm. To Jesus. Right. And you think, oh, but also another point I want to make, Jesus did not look at this young man with anger. If you no, look at that, yeah, it says yeah. he looked upon him with love. Right, right. So, um, but some have said, oh, why did God make this demand? Jesus make this demand on this potential disciple, you know? Jesus saw something in him right. that was yes. keeping him from the kingdom. He was like, if you will let go of that, I want to give you Amen. myself. I mean, Abraham was also also asked for a major sacrifice, yes. sacrifice your only mm -hmm. son. But Abraham went immediately because he's trusting God, like, okay, God, mm -hmm. you said that this is the inheritance and everything's going to come through him, so I'm going to trust you. You're going to bring him back or whatever, but I'm going to trust right, you. Right. But no one can serve two masters. That's right. Either he will hate the one or love the other or seek first the kingdom of God and all these things mm -hmm. I will be added unto you. And in Hebrews 12, 1, it says, let us throw off everything right. that hinders us so that we can run wholeheartedly after Jesus. Jesus was offering himself. Amen. Yeah. Now to come back to just one other thing, talking about priority, in 1 John it says, do not love the world or the things in this world. Mm -hmm. And it may not just be money, 
It could be success. It could be a title, a name, right. happiness, power, influence. It's anything that we put above anything Jesus. That has anything our heart. that puts us in front. Yes. And I think that's why he's so looking at the heart. And, the, and he yes. was so burdened by this young man's heart. And I think about yes. how he could be burdened by any of us right. that well, put anything above Jesus because he yeah. should be first and our last and then everything else. Falls I think it calls place. for the story helps us to do a self-examination yes. because when the young man began conversating with Christ, he began to tell him all about how he kept the law, yes. how he didn't do yes. anything yes. wrong. Right. And so many times I think we can get caught up in that same pride. I go to church, I do this, right. I pay my tithe, yes. you know, I do these kind of things and we become self-righteous. Mm -hmm. And so Christ kind of called him on the carpet right. to really find, like you said, where is your heart? You know, you're doing all these deeds and many times that's where we are. Mm. We're doing deeds to be seen of right. people and other things, but he really wanted to know, let's really get to the crust of this. What's really going on in your heart? So I think, you yeah. know, as we go through that, you know, we really need to look at it. You know, I would say there was pride there. Mm. You know, he did mm -hmm. definitely the pride and the lust of having things, right. all of that was cleaving his heart. And God was telling him in order to get to me, you have to let that right. go. I think that goes back to yes. total surrender. Yes. You're totally, you're surrendering everything to mm -hmm. Jesus and it says in Psalms, is it 5110, creating me a clean heart. Mm -hmm. And I think as you go back, we yeah. need to look at our heart and yes. ask the Lord, creating me a clean heart and renewing me a right spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's where we're gonna be truly yes. satisfied. Yes, and you know, in that culture, which makes the story even more poignant is that, um, wealth it was considered righteousness. Right. Mm -hmm. They felt you were more righteous yes. the more wealthy you were. So he, like you said, yeah. he was at a works mentality right. and he thought he had done it all and then realized it was really no. just no. about. Yeah, what we yeah. don't know is like, you know, the end of the story. We know he went away sad. Like God stayed Abraham's hand. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Right, right. What would he have done if he said, I surrender all because think about it when Zacchaeus, when Jesus had this encounter with him, Zacchaeus said, I will repay back everything I owe four times over. And he right. said, now here is a child of God. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we don't know what the Lord would have done if he'd have said, here, take it. Right, it's right. Quite possible. Mm -hmm. We could have been talking about 13 disciples. And that's yeah. Well. Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we don't know, but what we do know is that Jesus was concerned about his heart. Mm -hmm. And he loved and him we've got to make sure that our heart posture is where it needs to be so that we can fulfill what he's called us to do. Because if we have all these idols in our lives, mm -hmm. then it is going to hinder, I don't mean all these idols, but if we yes. have idols in our lives, yeah. it's going to hinder us from truly following Christ and yes. being his disciples in the here and now. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. Quite interesting when you said that there's about, you said 30 or so verses mm -hmm. a, around the heart in the Bible. Uh, when I started re researching idols, um, I found over, uh, that there was over 200 verses wow. Wow. around um, either idols or uh, idolatry yeah. and even one of the commandments is you shall have no other gods mm -hmm. but me or you shall have no other idols. So it's safe to say that the act of idolatry and idols is a very big deal. Yes. Mm -hmm. It is. Yes. It is. It's I mean, the second most mm -hmm. referred to topic in the Bible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Idolatry. Yeah. And money. Um, it said money and yeah. possessions. Because it's so easy for something else yeah. to yeah. creep in. Yeah. And we don't realize it. Mm -hmm. In the whole book in Revelation when he's talking to the churches, you have forgot your first love. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. something always gets in the way and that's why we need to do a heart check. Absolutely. Yes. I believe mm -hmm. that is so true. And I think now more than ever, we need to be in tune with the Lord, what the Lord is saying. We need to check our hearts on a daily yes. basis. You know, who mm -hmm. is an idol in your life or what is an idol in yes. your life? It could be your Man, kids. It could mm -hmm. be your kids. It could be your job. Yeah. It could be yeah. um, your reputation. I mean, yes. it could be, oh, it could yeah. be a m million different things that we are putting before God yes. and not giving God complete surrender in our complete heart. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back with more here on The Christian View. Don't go away. View. We're talking about the rich young ruler and how to follow hard after Christ. We talked a little bit about discipleship and wealth. We talked about the heart. And now I want to talk about eternal life. If you go to Matthew 19 and it is verse 23, it says this, Then Jesus said to his disciples, Truly I tell you, it is harder for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. And I don't want to stress the word rich per se. Um, 
but we've got to make sure we're checking our mm -hmm. heart, like we yeah. said last time, with, with idolatry, with what, what are we putting first and foremost before Jesus Christ? Because truly God is um, concerned mainly for our heart and mm -hmm. where we spend eternity, don't you think? That's right. Yeah. And I think that uh, money and other idols, is, as we've mentioned here, uh, has the power to draw us away from God and draw us away from what He has planned for us. Um, and I find something interesting with this um, rich young ruler story. So when Jesus asked him and approached him and said, I would like for you to give away all your riches and follow me, the next action that we see Jesus, Jesus didn't chase the man down. Right. He didn't try to renegotiate with him, oh. right? He didn't, um, he didn't try to talk through terms. Like he approached him and said, this is what it takes to have a relationship with me. Um, I want, basically what he was saying is, I want you all to myself right. mm -hmm. or none of you. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. All or nothing. Mm -hmm. We're either all in or we're not all in. Isn't that but either we're lukewarm, afraid. you're either yeah. hot or cold, right? He wants you to be either hot or cold. Yeah. He said he's going to spit out yeah. those who are lukewarm. But we're afraid. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. cling to these things because right. we don't realize what he's offering us. Right. That he mm -hmm. is giving us so much more. Mm -hmm. And we don't realize that. So we have fear. This man was fearful. You know, there's a story, you know, oh, look at me. I have all these crops. Now I'm going to build barns right, and, you right. know, and store up and say, no, you live life. When he, and they say, poor you, you know, tonight your soul is going to be demanded mm -hmm. of you. And then what are you going to do with all that stuff? And I think there's this fear. We got to cling to yes. it. And if we would go with open hands, Lord, Take whatever you need and use me however you want and trust that he's right, going to fill right. them with whatever it is. You know, there's this story in the Bible mm -hmm. of the husband and wife, right? Who, Ananias and Right, Sapphira. who were like, don't, don't say how much we have. Only give half. And mm -hmm. what happened to them? They, they died. They died. <laughs> yeah, they got struck dead. I mean, mm -hmm. I just think, I mean, that's, you know, God may not struck, strike us dead right now, but we're not being able to live to yes. the fullest that He has for us if we continue to hold our fists like this with what He's given us. Yeah. I mean, instead of full surrender, opening our fists and saying, okay, all I have is yours, do what you want with it, right. and to God be the glory, and right? Multiply it. Right. And, but it's scary. I, I go, it is scary yeah. because you're, you know, you, well, if you haven't yeah. had successes with God, you're like, oh, wait, is He going to come through for me this time, right? And in our culture, we're told, you know, plan for the future. Make sure you have investments in a retirement plan mm -hmm. and all that. So it shifts our focus from God being our source mm -hmm. yes. to we have to provide, we have yes. to make it happen, you know, almost like an orphan spirit. Like right. we, we've got to do this. Right. Um, so, yeah, but, you know, if you ever go on a mission trip and you see the children in a third world country that have have nothing. They are the happiest. Yes. Children. They're not worried mm -hmm. about all right. the problems that yes. children today mm -hmm. have. And, you know, now granted, mm -hmm. that's not ideal either. But as far as it coming down to that more equals more happiness, mm -hmm. right? That they can prove that for us every time mm -hmm. that they are happy and free. They're very free. Right. Wow. I, I remember, oh, I'm sorry. Ahead, no. I was re referring back to the story you read, the, the scriptures you read about the um, camel going through the eye of the needle. Mm -hmm. And it made me think about, um, um, when my grandmother was alive, we were watching National Geographic or something, and there was a something they were going on in camels. They were trying to get the camels in to the city, right. and um, and the camel was being stubborn, you know, and he wouldn't go through. And my grandmother pointed out to me because, you know, for years being a kid, you know, and just thinking literally, they were trying to put the camel. I'm like, you know, wow, rich mm -hmm. people never get to heaven right. if he got to go through the eye of a little right, needle. Right. But she was explaining to me that is the needle where that city entrance mm -hmm. was. And when you saw them trying to get through and the camel having to bow down and trust mm -hmm. them, and that really always resonated with mm -hmm. me that the issue then, what I got out of that was that a lot of times what God was saying is harder for rich people to bow down and trust in him and release it over to him. Right, right. And, and it just as difficult as trying to get that camel to struggle through, trust the people trying to get them through the city gates because, you know, when we have everything and we depend on our own resources, yeah. we depend on our own stuff, then where does that leave for us right. to trust in God? Right. And I think it's hard for us people to submit sometimes when I can just buy that, I can just right. pay for that. Right, right. But you know, when you, when 
really God is there and he's really the one that supplies everything. Right. Everything. And, you know, eventually yes. we need to learn to deny our flesh. Yes. Um, you know, jokingly, but not jokingly, Amazon can come to your house every five yeah. minutes if you if you want yes. to, you know, just by <laughs> continuing to, to, to fill up your storehouse with things yes. when, when, you know, we shouldn't be as concerned with mm -hmm. filling up our storehouses and more concerned with filling up yes. our heart for Jesus. Yes. That's why it says do not store mm -hmm. up for yourselves. You know, right. Things right. on earth where moth and rust and thieves, but store up in heaven. Right, right. We need to have his perspective mm -hmm. on things. Absolutely. But yeah, the goal is to have Jesus rule and reign in our life, yes. not idols and the things we think we want, things we need, you know. Right, because they ultimately they're not going to fulfill us. No. They're not going to bring no. us joy. Um, I have someone that I know, and she grew up very poor. Um, and didn't have a lot, and so she did start storing up stuff, you know, storing mm -hmm. and storing. And then she had a um, an experience with Jesus, and, and and Jesus was like, "I've got you, I've got you." And it, mm -hmm. it, it took her, you know, years to really trust that God got her. Is that proper English? Has her. God, God's God, God, God's her. got her. Um, <laughs> but once she realized it, it, there was so much freedom, so yes. much freedom. And so I can understand people who maybe have brought up were brought up in poverty. They, you know, try to s store stuff up out of fear. Mm -hmm. But once you have that encounter with God, knowing that He's going to show up and be faithful, it's it's easier just to open up your hands a little bit more. Yeah. But it's hard sometimes. Yes, it's it hard. is. Mm -hmm. It is. I think in the end, I think um, we as humans are always looking for a full assurance mm -hmm. to the path to heaven, just to be like, hey, look at all the things that I did. Um, in reality, our salvation is a gift from God through grace, right. not through the things that we've acquired or the things that we've done. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that's just a, a really important key. A, a church pastor told me a couple of weeks ago. Um, he said specifically, he says, uh, do you have money or does your money have you? Yes. yes. And true. when I sat and I thought about that for a second, I was like, oh boy. Mm. <laughs> I mean, yeah. God is so concerned with our heart. He is so concerned with our salvation. He wants us to spend eternity with him. And ultimately it's our choice where we spend eternity. But God, just like he was sad for the rich young ruler, if we don't choose God, He's going to be sad for us too. Yes. He wants to be with us in eternity. We're going to take a short break and we'll be right back with here. More on the Christian view. Don't go away. Christian View, we've had a great discussion on the rich young ruler and how you can follow hard after God. You know, we talked about that it's okay to have wealth. It's okay to have things as long as those things don't have you and that those idols aren't controlling your life. God is more concerned about your heart. He wants to spend eternity with you, but he's also a gentleman and he will give you that choice. So I encourage you today to pursue God like your life depends on it because it does and try to have that relationship with him because it's like no other. Know that he loves you, he sees you, and he has great things in store for you. Be blessed. Thanks for tuning into the Christian View. Bye bye.